Hi guys, I've been playing around with a game that I was building a little while ago. I've been kind of rebuilding it. Um, it's Delta Space, if you've seen it any, in any of my previous videos. And last night I was building on the the target finding script, which is this thing where you can see there's a whole bunch of arrows um, that point off screen and tell you where your targets are. And I had a bit of a trouble with that the first time I I did it when I was making the game before, and I found a decent way of doing it this time. <coughs> so I thought I'd make a a video on how I how I approached it. So I'm using NGUI, which is a great tool if if you haven't already used it. There's a free version I'm aware of, and yeah, it's worth giving it a go anyway. But the stuff that I'm doing, you could be using Unity's inbuilt GUI functions for it, and it might actually make some of the coding a little bit easier. But basically, I'll just cover, like I've got a panel, which is the indicator panel, and as you can see, it's just got a ship indicator, which is an arrow. Probably shouldn't have dragged that on, but anyway. Um, we've got an indicator, which is an arrow, and another one that's a box. It's not showing very well. Anyway, you'll see it. Oh, you've seen it before. Um, and that's just where I get these boxes and arrows from. But to jump into the actual script itself, this is the script that's on the indicator panel. And I'm doing a little bit of fancy stuff. I'm using a kind of a sprite pool so that I'm not, so that I can reuse arrows in the indicators. I won't go into too far into that. That's just basically there's an array with all of the all of the previous arrows and it tries to reuse arrows and then it deletes arrows that it hasn't reused but this paint function is the core of what the script does I'll just show it again so first it makes these squares and that's obviously the easiest part that's just for <coughs> as it loops through each space object it what it does is it check it it gets the screen position and to do that it uses camera main world to screen point with the transform position of the object that it's looking at so that'll just be the position on screen in terms of where it is on your monitor and then we get that and we check like it comes with a Z which is shows whether it's in front of or behind the monitor so we first check if it's in front of the monitor and we also check if it's on the screen basically by seeing whether the X value is between 0 and the width and whether the Y value is between 0 and the width and then if it's on screen what I do is I just get an indicator if you're using Unity's GUI, then you can do that a different way. You don't have to use the sprite pool. But what I do is, like, this is basically the only line that really, that this tutorial video will really concern itself with. It just puts the object, the indicator, right over where the object should be on screen, which is all of those. But yeah, the complex bit is these arrows which appear along the sides and I'll go into how that is done now so yeah that's that's this chunk of code here it does a few other things as well but anyway I'll go through it from the start what we do is we check like if the point is on the other side of the Z kind of like as if we're looking to mirror a mirror we flip over the coordinates so we times everything by negative one if it's behind us because everything's mirrored or else we get like if I take this out I'll quickly show like you get these situations where 
the arrows all point to something but then you go towards it and then they flip around exactly like what's happening there the way to stop that is that line of code just here where we flip it over and then we figure out where the center of the screen is which is just the screen width and the screen height divided by two that's not too hard and what we do to make the rest of this stuff easier is at the moment zero zero is at the bottom left corner of the screen but to make our cal calculations easier we want to basically make it so that it's at the center of the scene and to do that we just minus the screen center away later on we we add it back on after we finish doing our calculations but anyway so now that zero zero is at the center of the screen rather than the bottom left what we do is we find the angle between where the where the center of the screen is and where the mouse point will be pointing and to do that there's a fairly handy function called atan2 that's just in the mathf class that just takes an x and a y value and because they're now zero zero is at the center of the screen they're in the right coordinate space and that'll just give you an angle and the angle we just take 90, 90 degrees off it. This angle's in radians. I won't go into the difference between angles and between radians and degrees too much, but it's something to look into if you're used to using degrees. And so when I have the angle, I calculate the cosine and the sine of that angle, which just tells us what direction, whether it's going up or to the left. Like for example, if cos is great, if the cosine is greater than zero, then you'll need to be facing upwards. That might be a little bit confusing to wrap your mind around, but anyway, you can copy m most of this code and it should just work. Um, so that'll just get the angle between, like the rough angle that you should be heading to look at whatever you want to look at. And from there, we need to find exactly where to put the um, where to put the arrow on the sides of the screen. And this this I kind of googled around a little bit, and I found a few different people saying that we should um, like shoot rays and check where the ray hits, where the ray leaves the camera's frustrum and a few other methods which seemed a little bit hard and I thought up this method using um, like kind of y equals mx plus b format which is something that I learned in school it's just a method of yeah describing um, straight lines or like I think it's also called the slope intellect for the slope intercept formula or something like that anyway what we do is we find the gradient and the gradient is just basically like your your horizontal movement sp speed over your vertical movement speed or maybe even that's the wrong way around normally when I make these things I don't do it super accurate I just kind of like play a little bit with the plus and minus signs to get it the way that I really want it to be so when we have a gradient um, we basically use substitutions because everything's at zero zero we can ignore the plus b section and it's just y equals mx and so if we want to find and I also just because I don't want it to be right on the edge of the screen I just times the screen center by 0.9 which just makes it slightly inside as you can see that's yeah it's a nice little touch to add on But anyway, so basically all we need to do is like x will be like if you have y equals mx, that's the same as x equals m over y just due to if you if you divide both uh, so that would be y over m because you divide both sides by m. But anyway, um, so just using substitution, 
then you can come up with a screen position. Like if you're heading upwards, then it, it'd be the upper screen bounds. And if you're heading downwards, it's the lower screen bounds. And that would just get the position. Like if I comment out this lower section, what the top section does is it makes it so the arrows appear on top but it doesn't flip them over like you can see they disappear off to the left and they don't appear on the sides but yeah so that's what that top little bit of code does and this bottom one just checks if it's out of bounds and it does roughly the same thing but it uses x like x times m while this one's y over m and so just through a matter of elimination and testing then you have a new screen position which is where along the borders you will want to put the arrow and then I just get my arrow out of the sprite pool I rotate it by um, the angle that I calculated earlier and I position it in the screen position and then you have something like this whoops I didn't save my script Ta -da. <clears throat> and yeah again we have something like this where when I get a little bit closer yeah we can just see that the arrows sync fairly nicely up to the positions of where the ships are when they come onto the screen and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed that um, yeah let me know if there's anything else you would like me to make a video on and I'll knock up something so yeah, thanks for watching guys. Cheers.